the Bible speaks about temples, mm -hmm. temples as well. Mm -hmm. So we believe that we, our church have temples as well on the earth. <clears throat> so we can have the opportunity to perform baptism for our ancestors that who died and they get a chance to hear the gospel. They can have the opportunity to be baptized in proxy for those people. Yeah, and this, for the sake of the uh, soul, the for person. The sake of the soul. So they can have the chance to live with our Heavenly Father once more. So Heavenly Father has a divine plan for all of us. And He truly wants all of His spirits, babies, <laughs> to be with Him once more. And he's trying his absolute best. That's why you have a living day prophet on the earth and 12 apostles that lead and direct his kids as well on the earth at this time. So you ask your face quench up when I said a living prophet. I, I, 12 apostles, right? Man, I have a hard time with a lot of what you just said. Sure, yeah. Um, <clears throat> like, you, you've got, um, like, he, you probably heard these verses quoted back to you a bunch, but like in Hebrews uh, 9 and 10, it says, It's appointed unto man to die once, and then comes judgment, which we've taken to mean that there's not a second chance. Uh, Lazarus and the rich man after death in Luke 16, uh, there, there's no, there's a chasm between the torment of Hades and paradise, and there's no way to cross over from, from paradise to Hades or from Hades to paradise. Jesus says there's no way after death to cross into paradise after you've, after you've died. I won't let the guy go back to earth, won't let the guy leave the place of torment. So I, I don't think there's any scriptural evidence for people becoming believers after death. And I know you mentioned the first Peter 3 and 4 about Christ proclaiming to spirits in prison. Like, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's just probably where you're going. <laughs> no, I'm not going to Peter at all. <laughs> so, to be honest, when do you believe, like, judgment? Is judgment, uh, when is that? When does that happen? Well, it ha the final judgment hasn't happened yet. That's going to come, I don't know when, like kind of like you're saying, I don't know the timing of when it's going to happen. <laughs> but he, I, I want to understand, because I think this is going to be a big point for us, is um, how does someone get justified before God? So the justification is a biblical term used a lot, uh, justified. How does someone get in right relationship with God, counted righteous in his sight despite being a sinner? How do we get right with God? How are we accepted before God? It's very simple. Having faith in him, repent of all sins. Being baptized who holds authority, receiving something called a gift of the Holy Ghost, and enduring to the end. That's helpful. Can, mm -hmm. can I get you to interpret a verse? Go right ahead. So and you, I'm sure this is a popular one too. Second Nephi 25, 23. Through grace, you're saved after all we can. Mm -hmm. Yes, I know this is a big one. Uh -huh. So what is your interpretation of we're saved by grace after all yeah. we can do? I think the best answer would be like through the Bible. We recognize that Jesus Christ, he said not all... Uh, Coming to be saying, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of God. But he that, that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. That we believe that through Jesus Christ and his atonement, we are saved as we choose to follow him. we have faith in him and faith that leads to action at least that if Jesus Christ asks us to keep his commandments then we do it because if we choose not to keep his commandments it's not faith we're not having faith in our Savior if we choose not to strive and we're not obviously going to be perfect which is where repentance comes in by having faith in Christ faith leads to action no, I, okay, I, I, that's, that's helpful. I, I do think, I agree that faith should lead to action like James. Faith without works is dead. I agree with that. But I don't think that the grounds of my acceptance with God has anything to do with my good, good no. deeds. I think it's 100% by the righteousness of Christ. So, well, let me read Mosiah, what is this, chapter 4, verse 25. And now for the sake of these things which I have spoken unto you, that is for the sake of retaining a remission of your sins from day to day, so retaining your forgiveness, your remission of sins from day to day, that you may walk guiltless before God, I would that you should impart of your substance to the poor, every man according to that which he hath, such as feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, visiting the sick, and administering to their relief, both spiritually and temporally, according to their wants. Now, that sounds to me fundamentally at odds with the Gospel in the New Testament, where he's saying you retain your remission of sins by feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, 
giving to the poor. So, so it's saying that you're, you're maintaining your right relationship with God by your actions. Yes, the grace of God is helping you do that, but you're, you're, maintaining, you're, you're maintaining your remission of sins yeah. by your deeds, which to me sounds very contrary to the gospel. He's speaking to these people who are having these problems with giving to the poor and feeding the hungry, doing these things. He said, you guys need to start doing this. Just like a preacher to us today would say, you guys need to stop looking at pornography. You guys need to start living clean lives. You need to start having sex inside of marriage. You know, you need to start doing these things. It's, it's to relate to those people. Say, when you do these things... Can, can I just pause right there? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I agree that a, a Christian pastor would say something like that, but he wouldn't give the motivation for that to retain your forgiveness with God. He would never do that. That's, that's anti-gospel, because it's putting your works in the foundation of your acceptance with God. A Christian pastor would say, because of all that Christ has done and because of all God's promises to us, we should therefore cleanse ourselves of unrighteousness and pursue Him because of all the great things that He's done and who He is. Sure. Uh, not, not in order to keep yeah, yourself yeah. in a right relationship with God, because that's putting my actions at the heart of my relationship sure. with God, which I'm, I think pretty clearly the Book of Mormon and the Bible are teaching different things on this particular point. So we have a little things our Heavenly Father wants us to do, and those things are helping our brothers and sisters, uh, sharing our best to keep us with Jesus Christ's commandments. And maintaining your remission of sins. And maintaining our remission See, of sins. See, that's a big disagreement.